Well, here's something we haven't talked about in a little while. We're going to talk about directly Disney, where Disney apparently just recently used a uh, seemingly a drag queen or I guess some male dressed up as a woman in their parks at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique and it's being showcased in a viral video going around right now. We have an article here from Bounding Into Comics with a headline that says Disneyland cast member appears to dress in drag to greet children at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. So we're going to get into this article, guys. But of course, before we do, just consider giving this video a like so you can push us out into the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing because we have a goal for June where we're trying to hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of the month. I have a bet going on with Ryan Roger Athe right now, so please do anything you can if you're watching this video. Join the Bigot Army today and let's make it happen so we can have uh, Ryan do an update video about us. So it says, a Disneyland cast member was filmed in drag greeting young children and their parents at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique in the Anaheim, California theme park. Is anybody surprised by this at all? Is anybody genuinely surprised? It's Disney at the end of the day, and we knew that their identity politics was going to spill over into their parks. Now, they have been doing Pride stuff in their parks very quietly over the last few years. It'll be a couple merchandise here and there, nothing crazy. But now they're having Pride parades, events, right? They're going to do that, I think, twice this month. And they're also going to be doing stuff like this, where they're going to have males dressing up as females, basically in drag, running around in all of their sections in their park. So, of course, the identity politics are going to be running rampant, especially in the month of Pride Month. So it says the video was originally shared to TikTok by user, I, how do you say this, Court, Court, in a, Court in a Faber? I have no idea. In the video, the Disneyland cast member greets one young girl saying, my name is Nick. I'm one of the fairy godmother apprentices. I'm here to shop you around and make all of your selections for the day. Let's watch this god-awful video and see exactly what is going on here. Let's, let's play it and let's see. So my name's Nick. I'm one of Fairy Godmother's apprentices. I'm here to shop you around and make all your selections for the day. Come here. 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 Come I'm super excited too. You want to follow me? Is my royal family ready? Yep. Imagine paying $450 for a dress after a drag queen greeted you. <laughs> it's like it's crazy stuff, man. This world, it's a clown world. It is definitely a clown world out there all day long. And now you can see how and why Disney is able to continue their identity politics, even though they're losing an ungodly amount of money in terms of the movie scene and uh, entertainment scene as a whole, especially Disney+. Plus. They're allowed to lose all that money because they're charging $450 for a fucking dress that's probably made in China. Seriously, they're charging that much money <laughs> and people are buying it. White liberals are buying it up like crazy. So again, you know what? It's not even just white liberals. There's a lot of people that go there, and unfortunately, they uh, they don't they don't put Disney World and Disney in the same sector together, right? So like they they view Disney Entertainment as something separate from Disney World, and a lot of people still have a dream of going to Disney World. Unfortunately, so you're gonna get people who are willing to go there and spend 450 bucks on a dress, like that probably cost ten dollars to make. Still, it's ridiculous. It says, as explained by the official Disneyland website, the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique allows parents to purchase from a number of different packages where children are transformed through outfits, hairstyles, makeup, nail polish, and more into elegant princesses and shining knights. A photo on the website also makes it clear that female and male cast members previously had separate costumes with female cast members wearing dresses and a male cast member wearing a tuxedo vest and slacks. This is the picture right here on their website. Uh, obviously, that's a little bit too gendered for them. I do find it interesting that all of it is in the trans colors but again that's probably just coincidence considering this was always the colors prior to the whole big trans movement especially this lady on the right her outfit looks like the trans flag. The video comes after the Walt Disney uh, changed the titles of cast members working at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutiques in both Disneyland and Walt Disney World from Fairy Godmothers in Training to Fairy Godmothers Apprentices. WDW News Today reported back in July of 2022 that the title change was made to create a more inclusive environment for guests and casts. Of course they did. Of course they did. You got to be inclusive, ladies and gentlemen. It's Pride Month. Come on. Not even Pride Month. Just in general. It's Disneyland. Disneyland is going to be filled with a bunch of drag queens. Watch. It's only a matter of time. It must be an amazing time to be a drag queen because you could never be out of employment. Seriously, you could never. You got everybody and their mother trying to hire you for a virtue signal. You must be worth so much money right now. 
It says last February, journalist Christopher F. Rufo shared leaked recordings of the Walt Disney Company's Reimagine Tomorrow meeting with the company's diversity and inclusion manager, a.k.a. Fake Job, at Walt Disney Parks and Resorts Vivian Ware revealed that the company was putting the kibosh on gendered greetings. She said last summer, we removed all of the gendered greetings in a relationship to our live spiels. So we no longer say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we provided training for all of our cast members in relationship to that. So now they know it's hello, everyone, or hello, friends, where explained how boring. How sincerely boring. You want to be so inclusive that nothing is special anymore. Nothing is interesting. It literally is such a boring thing to hear and a boring thing to be a part of. But again, this is what they want. They want to homogenize everything. They want to make everything seem the same. Because the more you make everything see them seem the same, the less people who are actually trying to be different can actually be different. They want to discourage being different. They want everybody to be the same, and they try to hide it under the guise of inclusivity, but they really want to get people to not be different so that that reduces the chance of someone coming out of the norm, right, and being so influential that they're out of their control, and they don't want that. It says not only did they remove gender greetings, but Ware also revealed they were planning on changing all of the recorded messages throughout the park as well. She detailed, we're in the process of changing over those recorded messages, and so many of you are probably familiar, when we brought the fireworks back to the Magic Kingdom, we no longer say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we say dreamers of all ages. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so boring. So I love the fact that it's opened up the creativity. There's no creativity. If you have to homogenize everything, there's no creativity. That's That's the whole point. You don't want creativity. You want to stifle creativity by doing stuff like this. If you homogenize speech, you stifle any and all creativity that could possibly come out by far. It says the opportunity for our cast members to look at that. We have our cast members working with merchandise, uh, working with food and beverage, working with all of our guest-facing areas where perhaps we want to create that magical moment with our cast members, with our guests, she said. Where then added, and we don't want to just assume because someone might be, in our interpretation, maybe presenting as female, that they might not want to be called princess. So let's think differently about how we really do engage with our guests in a meaningful and inclusive way that makes it magical and memorable for everyone. There is nothing magical about homogenized speech. There is nothing magical about it. And if you are presenting female, then you should be called a female at the end of the day. Even if you're a dude, if you're a dude who's hardcore passing as female, I'm going to call you a female until I find out otherwise. And once I find out you're a dude guess what i'm gonna call you dude that's just what it is you can get mad all you want i understand shit happens life's rough get a helmet but at the end of the day that's what happened i'm obviously presenting male i would not want someone to call me female but at the end of the day i wouldn't get offended because it's who cares what people say who cares but i you know what i will get offended if you refer to me as some sort of homogenized speech oh good afternoon human <laughs> what good afternoon human what happened a good afternoon sir like fucking crazy the company's previous ceo bob Chapek, also indicated that they were in favor of exposing young children to teaching on sexual orientation and gender identity through their content programming by opposing a bill in florida that eventually banned such teaching to children in kindergarten through third grade which we know is factual information they have specifically stated that the only way they're going to circumvent the florida bill since they were quiet during its actual inception was that they were going to try to indoctrinate people through their entertainment that's why they treat their entertainment with a with a care without a care in the world they don't care how much money they lose on that particular avenue because that particular avenue is not for revenue their revenue is their parks their revenue is their merchandise their revenue is not their entertainment sector their entertainment sector is their indoctrination sector that's their esg sector that's what they go and push the message out into and the parks are where they make their money it says in an email sent to Disney employees, Chapek wrote, because this struggle is much bigger than any one bill in any one state, I believe the best way for our company to bring about lasting change is through the inspiring content we produce, uh, the welcoming culture we create, and the diverse community organizations we support. Good old Bob Chapek is, is, uh, has been removed and replaced by Bob Iger, as you guys are very well aware. And uh, I, I genuinely believe that Bob Chapek was the fall guy for a lot of these changes that Bob Iger didn't want to take the fall for. And then he eventually came in and tried to be the rescue boy. You know, this is something that happens a lot in uh, these corporations but ultimately at the end of the day disney as a whole is a company that you cannot trust and if they're pushing stuff like this on kids in the parks it's only a matter of time before you see disgusting drag queens like this in every single section of disney and i don't know why people still go to disney but i can't i'm not i don't judge anybody uh you if you want to spend your money there by all means go do what you want to do you're an adult you make your own decision but just let it be known that this is only going to get worse by far so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you did enjoy it if you did consider leaving me a subscribe i would greatly appreciate it. don't forget to like the video comment let me know what you thought and i'll see you guys on the next one hypnotic out